What's up, guys? Max Sharkey here. Day three of the cut. Leg day, 156.4. Morning weigh-in. We have bum essential pre-workout. This stuff gets you ridiculously hype. I feel like I did whenever I first started going to the gym. That's how hype this gets me. Uh, salt water. I say that like I'm old. <laughs> salt water uh, for our sodium intake. We want to be getting high sodium if we're going to be sweating a lot and want better performance and endurance and whatnot. Just a random water to take with me. And then we have some honey for our carb intake. I'm going to have a little more than this, but uh, all of this is going to boost my performance. So I will ingest this, slam this stuff down. Maybe I'll speed it up. I don't know. I've said it before. And I'll say it again, not much of a two-scoop guy, but I find myself taking two scoops every single workout. Now, as a result of taking two scoops every workout, my pre-workout's almost gone. Especially, you know, when you come to sharing it with other people, having two scoops yourself, I mean, you're looking at a big, big stock decrease of your pre-workout. I'm going to eat. Now, guys, this is important. I'm going to eat my honey before I ingest my pre because when you have two scoops of pre-workout, I mean, this thing has 400 mg of caffeine. It has, I think, 6.4 grams of beta alanine, and this is in two scoops. Uh, and also a pretty good dose of L-citrulline. So this is like what we're looking for, right? L-citrulline, I believe it's a... like. I could say the science nerd term, or I could just say the bro science term. Vein expander. Makes your veins look bigger. So that's good. Hopefully we can maybe eventually see some quad veins. I've always thought that looked cool. I want that. But unfortunately, I have a lot of fat stored in my legs. So Always eat before you take your pre. Always eat before, in my opinion, because it hits so much harder in, in, in a bad way if you take it on an empty stomach. Like, ugh, don't, don't do it. If that goes for any pre, any kind of insane energy drink, but especially if you're taking a more intense pre-workout, like, you know, Bomb Essential or whatever, then yeah. So, you guys are going to watch me ingest this honey. Oh, never mind. I'll finish this and you guys can watch later. Actually, never mind. This is part of the process. Yesterday's calorie intake was very low. And it actually, actually wasn't even hungry, believe it or not. I, uh, I have this pre, and I mean, caffeine, we all know, is an appetite suppressant. So... I had, you know, two scoops of pre, automatically you're going to be less hungry. And I had a very filling dinner. It was just so much meat, so much pork loin. Uh, very tasty filling. I had some Japanese barbecue sauce as well with it. It was very tasty. But yeah, caloric intake ended up being a little over 1,000, 1,030 or something like that. And, uh... Yeah, that was it. But we also did lots of cardio, and I was in probably one of the biggest deficits I've ever been in, in terms of like an intentional cutting deficit. Now, is that practical for every day? No. I'll say that firsthand. When you look at practicality, you're going to be looking for things like, can I actually ameliorate my hunger properly? Am I getting adequate macro and micronutrient intake? Take a multivitamin. Make sure you're getting enough fat, right? Don't cut out all your fat. Get enough carbs before your workout. Get enough protein to sustain your muscle. There's a lot of factors. So that's part of the reason I probably didn't get enough of uh, certain certain nutrients yesterday. But today I will get that. And uh, I'm not going to lie, this Texas Roadhouse butter has been staring at me 
goodness, guys. This is ridiculous. I really am tempted here. Look at how nice and fluffy that looks. I don't know if you guys can see that, but... <clears throat> this is from Thanksgiving, and it just... Listen, maybe it maybe it's bad by now. I don't really know. I don't really know how that works. But if it's not, that might be on the menu later. <laughs> Salt water down. Pre-workout about to be down. Honey down. Ah. <sighs> Maybe I'm procrastinating this. You know, as much as I emphasize... As much as I emphasize not taking pre on an empty stomach, I kind of realized that I just did. I gotta be honest with you. This Texas Roadhouse butter, it's calling my name. I need to have a little bit, especially considering I'm on a fairly empty stomach, so... We're not doing that today. I gotta, I gotta just say something about myself right now, and about everybody. You think that you don't look good for no reason. You've been in the gym working really hard, and you gotta realize, man, you're so much better than you used to be, right? So that has nothing to do with my multivitamin, but I just thought about that. Keep working hard, man. One a day, men's should cover a lot of my micronutrient intake. I don't know how much. Honestly, I haven't even bothered to look at the vitamins in it, but it's called one a day, men's. It's got to be good. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the car. I think I look stupid. No, you look cool. All right. So, guys. We are basically here, just down the street pretty much. We're gonna have a really solid leg workout, hopefully. I feel a little off, not gonna lie. I feel a little crappy. All right, guys, we are gonna go in. We're in the gym now. I feel very weak, not gonna lie. I feel extremely, extremely weak. I thought I was gonna be able to max out the stack. I don't know if I'll be able to today, but I'll try my best. <clears throat> 370. Let's see how this feels. I want to get myself kind of, since uh, my legs aren't that long, I have to set my uh, myself forward a little more to create a better range of motion. Right? Because if I'm here, I can't get much of a full wrong. Right? But if I'm sat forward, I have to really push my legs out and then I can get it some deep uh, ankle. Bend. So I'm going to point my toes in to bias the outer calf. That was all right. Stronger than I thought I'd be. I noticed that when I pointed my toes in, they kind of just reset to neutral. <laughs> this guy uses a little bit of body English. I like it though. His calves have gotten quite a bit bigger. And uh, even though he, you know, does cheat reps, kind of, they still respond pretty well. So, you know, my knee got a little beat up on that last set of straight leg passes. So I cut that short. But I don't know if you guys noticed me doing kind of a partial range of motion in the bottom. It's because I believe that my calves have specifically benefited from. The stretch portion of the calf raise more than anything else, so that's all I'm gonna do from now on. All right. 
All right, guys. Hopefully, I won't need any spotting for this set. You know, this can really screw up your ankle if you fail and uh, don't have a spot or anything. So, never set this thing down too tight. So you can get stuck. All right, let's go. <sighs> a little self spotting there. Five really good quality reps. That was the best set of calf raises I've ever had. to stiff leg deadlifts. Have a wider grip and then you can get down deeper. I never thought about that for this Smith machine. I always thought I couldn't do deadlifts on it because it's shallow. So, actually pretty exciting because Smith machine deadlifts are one of my favorite hamstring exercises. If you want your hamstrings covered, do some seated hamstring curls. And the main part, but stiff leg deadlifts are a little added bonus. Alright guys, hopefully this should feel pretty good on the hamstrings. Again, this is a really shallow deadlift, so, you know, can't go down that far. But, hopefully it still feels good. Feels like pretty terrible, not gonna lie. I did it, but the range of motion is just awful. I'm done. Oh boy, that hurts really bad. Alright guys, you could have a bad set. But don't let that turn in your workout to do a bad workout. You know, sometimes you can hurt yourself or your low back or whatever. But if you know you could do something else for a good quad pump and a good stimulus, then just do it.
Now that was a good set. And uh, totally pain free, even after tweaking my low back. So, I call that a win. We're gonna do this for one more set. Here guys, real test of your will is how far can you take a leg press? And I'll say this, I've only taken a leg press to true failure maybe twice. You know, to reach an absolute true failure, you have to endure through running out of breath. The most intense burn you've ever felt in any muscle. You know, that stabbing in your quads. Ah! I got three more. Yeah, I put a number on it. Come on. <laughs> Same thing happened again. I threw down my hoodie, which had my mic on it. So, you guys couldn't hear the pump check. So I'll just do it again. This time it'll be even better. You know, shirt didn't get off last time. This time it is. Uh, yeah, we still got probably 10, 15 more pounds to go on the cut. Just depends on how I look. All right. Take care.